Um, I've got my notes here. Rob, your microphone is sounding fine. Good, good, I'm good. Aaron, yours is okay as well. Excellent. Cool. I'm just waiting for, for Caleb to uh, appear. I think he'll be here sooner or later. It's, it's getting a bit late. I think he's a bit late. Oh, 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 Merry Christmas, everyone! Merry Christmas, who, who are you? Wow! Oh, isn't it obvious? It's me, Santa! Santa? Why, yes! Uh, what can we do for you? I heard there was there was going to be a gathering here today, so I stopped by to say hello to all the good lads from the Dream Pod podcast. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's just see who's here today. This is amazing. Oh, there's Rob. Oh, Rob, you've been such a good boy this year. Yay! Oh, and look, it's, oh, it's, it's Gagaman. Oh, what a good artist you are, bringing joy to everybody on the internet. Bless you, Santa. Oh, and, oh, 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 Tom. I, I've been looking over my list. I'm a, I'm afraid you've been very bad. Uh, eh? What? Typical. I'm afraid that you've been ignoring Sega corporate copyrights. <laughs> I can't can apologize. Tom, you understand that respecting intellectual properties is a fundamental of capitalism. Oh, I'm afraid there's going to be nothing under the tree this year, Tom. Uh, same as every Except year. Except maybe a letter. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, for the rest of you, though, Merry Christmas! Christmas and Happy New Year! Goodbye! This is a Dreamcast disc and is for use only on a Dreamcast unit. Playing this disc on a hi fi or other audio equipment can cause serious damage to its speakers. Dreamcast, up to six billion players. Why don't we play together? Hey, 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 it's time to make some crazy money. Are you ready? Here we go! Please stop this disc now. Now, 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 now. Hello, and welcome to episode 21 of the Dreamcast Junkyard Dream Pod. My name is Tom, and I'm joined by my festive Christmas elves. I've got Rob. Oh, that was a bit a bit odd. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Aaron, the Gagaman Foster. Hello. And uh, joining us all the way from uh, very festive upstate New York, we have uh, we have Caleb. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Not bad, not bad at all, thank you. Guys, it's almost Christmas. Are we feeling festive? Yes. Yes, I certainly am, yeah. Yeah, again, again, guys, I gotta say again, I'm sorry for being late. I uh, hope I didn't miss anything. We have we have actually had a guest appearance from Santa Claus. Uh, he mentioned something that we'll speak about later on the on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you you you'll be uh, you. I think you'd be quite interested in this actually, Caleb. What you mentioned. Anyway, um, should we should we crack on uh, and talk about things that we've been playing or things that we've bought in the in the last couple of weeks since we did our last episode? I'm going to start with you, Aaron. Have you uh, have you been playing anything? Uh, yeah, um, I know we're going to be talking about this a bit later on, but as soon as Res was announced for the PlayStation VR, pretty much minutes after I saw the trailer, I just had to whack the disc in and play it. <laughs> yeah. On yeah. Dreamcast. Hey, uh, speaking of that, I hate to interrupt, but did anybody actually download the, the uh, I believe it's called the K-Res? The one that has mm. the debugging yes. software right on there. Yes. Yeah, and then you have, then you, I think you, I think you have to use the keyboard to turn the the, uh, mm. the debugging software off, and it's yeah. got like slightly different music and stuff. It's got completely different songs in some cases. Yeah. 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 Wait a minute, K-Res, is that something for the Dreamcast or the PC? I, I don't know yes. what it is to be honest. Dreamcast, yeah, it's a beta oh, disc right, okay. that someone leaked somehow. <laughs> so yeah, obviously I was playing the uh, Res for quite a while, and I never actually realised there's like another mode in the game. Like I've always just played the normal just play mode but there's a mode called beyond which is kind of like an arcade mode where you pretty much just get one chance to go through a bunch of levels and there's actually a few like unique levels in there which i didn't even know existed (laughs) so i ended up playing the game for quite a few hours so i've only ever actually managed to beat the main like story mode once i tried again like this week and i got right to the final boss and as usual it just absolutely pummeled me i always get i managed to level up my character right up to the um like the baby or whatever it yeah. is like the the final level but when i once i get to that final boss like it just completely obliterates me every time yeah. there's just this one section where they just shoot 
thousands of missiles at you and I just don't know what to do. And I managed to do it once before, but like this time I got the bad end again. <laughs> I've got to be honest, I've never actually completed it because I'm rubbish at games, generally as a rule. Um, and I've only <laughs> seen the whole game because when we had it at Play Expo Manchester a few months ago, Martin <laughs> is absolutely brilliant at Res. And he just oh, he, nice. he completely like owned the game about three times, one after like in succession. Yeah, he, he, he killed it, man. Yeah, so I awesome. mean, we had a lot of people just standing there watching him play it, which was quite cool, to be honest. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm no good at Res. I'm, I'm crap. <laughs> yeah, anything else? Uh, other than that, um, on other consoles, I've been playing a game on Steam called and well, I don't know how to really word it, but it, it, the game's literally called Ah for the awesome. <laughs> that's what? the actual name if, you, if, if you're on huh? steam and you've got me on my friend list you'll keep seeing in the week aaron has aaron is playing ah <laughs> it's literally just loads of A's. but uh basically it's a free falling <laughs> score attack game where you're like falling through the sky and there's like all these floating is that, buildings is that a sequel to another game with a similar name yeah there's two of them i think it's like an updated version of it but it's got a very similar name. I think it's the same, pretty much the same name, just a different subtitle. It's a prequel called Ah uh, Zero. <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, sorry um... about that. But yeah, basically, it's like a free falling score attack game where you basically have to brush past buildings as you're free falling and you parachute to the end. And it's actually really addictive. When you're like going past buildings, they call it kisses and they mm. give you a thousand points. And if you're like, close to buildings while you're falling past them you get like this beeping noise and every one of them's worth like a hundred points and they're called hugs so basically you're just falling trying to get uh hugs and kisses <laughs> and then there's like protesters that you have to flip off um give the bird Sounds weird and yeah. it's very odd but it's kind of addictive in a kind of nights into dreams kind of way where you know you're just trying to get your best score on each level yeah. where i grew up kissing the pavement's not a good thing <laughs> and you, you don't you don't want to do that <laughs> um, another really funny thing that's actually a little bit dreamcast related about it is there's all these little tips on like the level select and when you click on them it just gives you some random weird quote of some kind but every one of them you click on it and there's a voice that goes um does anyone know where i can find some sailors <laughs> hey mister what a wrestle <laughs> just random general quote out of nowhere just in the middle of the game for some reason and every time you click on it it comes up it's not like the original voices from Mu. it's just like re-recorded but yeah that's just there <laughs> as a as a quick side note while we're talking briefly about Shenmue, did you see the video that adam korolik put up with him and cory marshall lying on a bed I saw. I saw. I the, saw the thumbnail. Yeah, and... I saw yeah, the I thumbnail saw the as well. They look very comfortable and intimate on that. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Um, all right. How about you, Caleb? What have you been up to? Uh, well, I have run up zero with the Dreamcast stuff. I had a couple of heartbreaking uh, eBay auctions. Um, so, no, I, ever since I got that copy of uh, Giant Graham 2000, I have not had any sort of online shopping for Dreamcast stuff. And, of course, around here, there is no Dreamcast stuff in any of the shops. So, yeah, I, uh, did, my, I did my first crack at uh, Pure Solar. And, you know, that game's really fun. Got a lot of neat uh, visuals in it. And uh, interesting. Interesting little, uh, it's interesting little RPG. At first glance, it kind of looks like the, uh, um, it looks like it might be Chrono Trigger, but no, it's just the uh, traditional, uh, you know, Final Fantasy uh, style battles and stuff. And it's got the little circle ring uh, that's reminiscent of of some of the. Oh uh, God, now I always forget the name of that. Uh, the circle ring inventory from the games, and then it just blank in my head. There was many of them that had that, uh, but I'm thinking of a certain one, and I cannot come up with it. Is it Turok Two? No. <laughs> a lot of the first, a lot of the first person shooters like Tomb Raider and Turok had the uh, circle ring thing too. But this is yeah. this is it looks specifically almost exactly like the ones from. Uh, a game that I cannot find. I cannot remember the name of it. Ugh. Anyways, yeah, it's a very interesting game. Very happy to get it. Uh, in other news, I've been, you know, just dicking around with the uh, new uh, beta of uh, Don't Starve Shipwrecked, which ah. is an amazing game. It's, it's those games keeps on coming up with new ways to kill me, which is great. <laughs> so, you know, I thought I had everything situated, and boy, there's there's certain ways where you can just crash in the middle of the ocean and die horribly. So, yeah, it's very interesting. <laughs> I, I really Excellent. hope that uh, you know Cappy's doing that one. So uh, they're still oh, working okay. on the uh, uh, the Don't Starve uh, Together game. Which so I hmm. hope uh, hope one of these days when that has a final release, we can all play that together, and that'll be interesting. Um, and yeah, and other than that, I have been uh, swamped a little bit. That's why that hasn't been that many videos because I had to work overtime. And oh god, 
I had to do a thing for minions, and my god, I'm sick of that. <laughs> you have to dress up as a minion, did you? I did a movie. We have a movie license at the place where I work, so I had to do a showing of minions. And my god, that place was just full. Uh, and it's like, it's like, oh boy. I, I, was it double build of Frozen? No, no. I mean, I just, I did like, well, Frozen had a big thing too, but this was actually bigger. We, we show really nice movies, but yeah. Uh, boy, the, of course, Minions is going to be the most popular one of the year. So <laughs> that's, that's what I've been doing. And what about yourself, Rob? Yeah. Um, it's been quite quite a good sort of week and a bit for me in terms of games. Are you out of the desert? I'm out of the desert. It's funny. Um, <laughs> just, as Aaron said, as soon as the res bombshell, got, it sort of pushed me. It was like finally someone putting the gun to the back of my head. I'd been dallying around with res on Dreamcast for, for a fair few months. Because mm. I, I, I don't own a copy, and I, I really wanted a copy, but it was one of those games where the price was constantly preventing me from pulling the trigger. Yeah. But as, as soon as that, as soon as the Sony event happened, I was like, you got to do it now, because if you don't do it now, you're never going to pick this up, basically, because the price will just keep increasing exponentially now. And- yeah, I'll be sending you all over again, on Ailes. It's going to be sending you all over again. Oh, yeah, definitely. So I immediately went and bought Res. I've still not got it, but it is on its way to me. And I have played Res before, uh, so it's going to be very satisfying to get that back in the system. Rob, is it the PAL version or the Japanese one? It is the PAL version. Nice. Okay, I have the Japanese one. Yeah, so have I, because the PAL one is just kind of, it's it's out of my price range. But the the Japanese one I got from uh, a guy who is uh, on Twitter as the Retro Hunter. I don't know if you know him, Ali Hogg. Um, He's um, he's quite sort of well-known in the retro collecting circles that I'm moving in and uh, he sold me the Japanese version for I think it was like something like a tenner or something so that was really good nice. yeah, that's and, a good uh, price yeah so um, hmm. I knew that the Jap- the Japanese version was cheaper but again from what I was seeing maybe I was maybe I, know, I was getting unlucky on eBay but it was always like around 30 notes for the Japanese version and hmm. Um, hmm. It, I ended up picking up this this PAL version for just over 40 so oh, oh wow that's really good that is good oh yeah, yeah I mean better well, I've seen it for yeah. I really want forty to... American dollars. That's good. That's a good price. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was forty if American only. dollars. Holy moly! Forty American dollars is the actual price I would like to play for Res. So I've kind of paid almost twice the amount of money um, than I was really yeah. prepared to. Do. I mean, maybe that was me being cruel on on the game because it is obviously very good. It's just not my mm. bag normally. Normally, those sort of games aren't my bag, but. I was. Um, it was really ever since play. It was funny you mentioned just watching Martin kill Res and the sound. The soundtrack was amazing, and I thought, yeah, I need. To, yeah. I need to get me that because I love. I love those sort of quality, sort of really pumping soundtracks. And uh, I was like, yeah, Res was good, and it is worth the money. So finally, I've finally I've gone and done that. So I'm out of the desert on Dreamcast, which is fabulous. Um, Fantastic. A couple of other additions. Still on Saturn, I picked up Groove on Fight. Ooh, now that's that's a game that I got like uh, when I bought my, uh, my when I got the thrift store PS One that was all like modded out and stuff. That was huh. one of the games that was one of the Burton games for it, and I've oh. been trying to find, and it does not work properly. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I've been trying to get that on Saturn for a long time. Yeah, I've got a copy of that knocking around. I've had that for a few years. Before you uh, carry on and tell us a little bit about it, right? My only. Like experience with this game is that I read a review of it in the I think it was the official Sega Saturn magazine and they ripped it to bits and said it was horrendous. So, what's your opinion? Right, first of all, Asterix. I haven't really played it too much. I've only had it a couple of days and I've been pretty busy. However, I would say that I bought this basically because of Atlas. I looked at I I, I like Atlas very much, and I I went, oh, Atlas made this fighter, and I loved the, the aesthetics look really really cool and a bit again a bit different. And the, as with Atlas and most of their games, the soundtrack seemed to be uh, or the music the, the background music seemed to be pretty funky. It was like I love my versus fighters, and I thought this was something a bit different in terms of the gameplay. Though I've got to say, it's re- how can I describe it? It's really stiff. Like it doesn't feel like a premium fighter. Like if you think of the fluidity of chaining moves in some of the better franchises, like how fluid it is to pull off combos and specials in, say, I don't know, yeah, Street Fighter or King of Fighters. You know, mm. it's it's very 
very smooth. You feel like you're always in command and there's no overrun. I, I don't know what the technical phrase is where you input commands and there's a delay in terms of uh, like an animation delay. You know, you might... I know what you mean, yeah. You try to... You execute a command and then the character does it, but it, it's almost as if it's slightly off. The animation is slightly slower than you'd like it to be. So the character ends up, you know, actually actioning the movement well after you've inputted the, you know, the input into the controls. So it's not very smooth, very stiff. That's how I describe the fighting. And uh, yeah, in terms of the combat mechanics, it is nothing to write home about at all. And I can kind of see why Atlas, well, I don't, I haven't really read up on on their library, so to speak, versus fighters, but they didn't really make many more, right? I think uh, Groove on Fight is actually technically a sequel to the Power Instinct series. Oh, right. Which was by, I think it was Data East or someone else. I think it's technically them working on a sequel to another company's franchise. Oh, right. Maybe that explained it then. You know, you get the cool visuals, you get the funky music because it's Atlas, but cool game, yeah. I'm, I'm not sold, but uh, I don't know. It's, it's a curiosity. Mm, I thought it was all right. It's okay, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not sticking. I'm not sticking it to it. It's not a classic by any no, means. No, it's not a classic. But it's, it, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Good name though. Groove on fire. Yeah. What a, what a great, what a great name. You, you know that, that you're spot on, Tom, and and it's that little different thing. That's what I look for now when I'm collecting. Certainly in in shmup genre and in versus fighter genre is something a little bit different because you know you guys you've probably played vast yeah. majority of the core games in those genres and once you've done that you're always looking for something different and uh yeah. when i saw this i thought it was something different and it is it's just not it is as aaron says yeah. it's it's not a classic um last thing because i know i'm taking up stupid amount stupid amount of time i got uh fast racing neo on wii u oh. Okay. Martin again. Let's name drop him. Uh, he basically went, <laughs> he was like, "Fast Racing Neo is really cool. Um, it's like F Zero X, basically, with a bit of uh, hype out visuals thrown in. It's on Wii U. It's tenor. Blah blah blah. You know, it's worth worth pick up. I hadn't heard anything about it." I dropped the money, and uh, yeah, it's um, of all the F-Zeros, I'd say it plays closer to F-Zero X than any of the others. So yeah, it yeah. feels hmm. like F-Zero X, but it looks like Wipeout. Done. <laughs> it's got a bit of an Ikaruga taste to it as well, hasn't it? Because it's got that like changing colours to go through You're certain right. boosts thing going on. Ikaruga! Ikaruga, yeah. Um, po- the polarity shifting thing is there, yes, from Ikaruga. Mm, that's the words I was looking you for. You shift <laughs> the polarity of the ship depending on which sort of fast strip or gates you're running through if you're in the wrong polarity it slows you down basically and yeah Hmm. it's really straightforward like it's not going to be the longest game in the world i've not finished it yet but i've motored through it quite quickly in a couple of days and uh yeah if you like your speed i've got to say guys like it's been since f-zero that i've really experienced a game that was this fast when you are really gunning it hit a boost then you boost yourself it is like eyes in the back of your skull time <laughs> no i've heard i've heard good things about it last thing i'll say the only problem is because i know this is a dreamcast podcast because it's on the wii u i don't know if it's because the wii u is not powerful enough the serious aliasing issues so when you're really gunning it the entire screen sort of smudges together in a blur and while you can still see what's going on it removes depth from the image so you've really hmm. you've really got to be like oh, sort of like on the money in terms of looking for obstacles coming up because there's no depth so your eyes are like hmm. oh there's that thing's well in the distance and then suddenly you're like oh oh no man it's like <laughs> and then you just I smack just, it <laughs> you know, derailed myself straight into it and burnt up horribly so anyway yeah that's me let's move on sounds good sounds good um i'll just quickly run through what i've been playing uh, on the dreamcast uh, i've been playing uh game called Arabian Nights, Prince of Persia. You might have seen hmm. that. I uh, put a, an article up about it on, I did, on the yes. Junkyard main site. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd never played it before, and I'd heard that it was terrible, and I played it, and it's actually not as bad as I was initially led to believe. So that was hmm. quite cool. I actually prefer it to all the Tomb Raider games I played on the Dreamcast. So just just for people who haven't seen it, may, might not have seen that, what's it closest to in terms of other games? Like I say, it's probably closest to Tomb Raider, like Last Revelation or, or something like that, uh, or Chronicles. Uh, it's a three- hmm. It's a 3D action adventure, you know, it's, imagine Prince of Persia in 3D, it's full of instant death uh, oh, okay. situations where you're just like, oh, pick this up, oh, wait a minute, I've just been crushed by a rock that I didn't know was going to come and crush me, stuff like that, you know, it's really annoying, hmm. but helpfully you do get quite uh, a lot of save points throughout the levels, so... It's just a case of reloading and going, right, it's trial and error, basically. When did they redo the Prince of Persia with the time? Travelling Rewind mechanics? PS2, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, PS2 GameCube uh, era, yeah, um, with uh, Sands of Time. Yeah. Um, mm. So they, 
Yeah, so this yeah. one was this one came out before that, obviously. Um, but it's like seen as like the, the final game in the original Prince of Persia trilogy. Oh, so right. Prince of Persia, Prince of Persia two, and then Prince of Persia: Arabian Nights. Did the original chap have anything to do with this? Then I couldn't say anything about about the development of it or anything like that. Um, I mean, the game it, it didn't get a, a release uh, in PAL territories. It was only a US release, so. That's why I've never played it up until now. Uh, I, I knew it existed, but I just never really thought to investigate because I thought, well, mm. I heard that it was crap, but it's actually not. And uh, I will say that um, it's not an original copy. It, um, it's a bootleg, basically, that uh, a guy called Martin, who does the um, like reproduction versions in the Blu-ray cases, he's on Facebook. Yeah. He, he does the uh, he does those, and he sent them to me out of, out of the blue, which was really nice of him. He, another game he sent me was uh, Mars Matrix, which is a game nice. that is nice. out of my price range. That is my favourite shmup on the whole system. Mm. I love that game. Yes. I, again, I'd never played it before, just because of the price is prohibitive. And he sent mm. me um, a, a bootleg version of it, and yeah, it's, it's really good. I'm, I'm really impressed with it. So that's all I've been playing really on the Dreamcast. Otherwise, I've been playing on the PS2, uh, sorry, the PS2, no, the PS4, on the Vita. I've been playing WRC5 on the Vita. Fucking hell. <laughs> WRC5, these are Vita, PS4, PS2, no. Right, I've been playing WRC5 on the PlayStation yeah. 4. I've been also been playing a game called Riptide GP2 on the PS4. Which is like a downloadable uh, game that cost me like two pound fifty yeah. or something. And imagine, imagine Hydro Thunder crossed with Wave Race, crossed with Extreme G, crossed with Wipeout or something like that. It's like a futuristic jet ski game, and it's absolutely brilliant. Huh. It, it looks like a really high res iOS game, so it's not amazingly good looking, but hmm. it's so much fun, and the soundtrack is just brilliant. Do you remember that really cheesy like um, DJ guy called Bass Hunter from <laughs> years ago? All, wow. all of the tunes are like Bass Hunter songs. It's just like they're just pounding like techno <laughs> crap, and it's just, wow. it's, it fits it so awesome. well. It's brilliant! It cost me two pounds, two pound fifty something like that. The other game is uh, a game called Rocket Birds Hard Boiled Chicken. Oh. I think I've played a demo of that. I've been playing that on the Vita. It is cross by on the Vita and the PS4, but um, mm. I'm mainly playing it on the Vita. And imagine a mixture between Metal Slug and Luft rousers. Wow. That's quite high <laughs> praise. That's quite high praise right there. Yeah, it's just this brilliant, like, side on 2D, like, Metal Slug style um, platform shooter. And then you get these intermittent, like, levels where you can fly around on your on your rocket pack and it turns into a bit of a schmuck. And it's, it's again, yeah. it's, it's phenomenally good. I can't believe it, they're giving it away for free on PSN, like, this month's PSN free oh, games. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I've been doing on the, on the Vita and the PS4. Five, eight, nine, ten, or whatever they are. Anyway, guys, let's uh, move on. One thing I just wanted to quickly mention before we go into our first uh, proper topic is um, I had a, a message on the Facebook group from a guy called uh, Joe Douglas. This is going back to something that Caleb was talking about earlier on with uh, Pierre Solar. He said that um, he had the Mega Drive version from Watermelon and his Mega Drive broke. And he then went and asked Watermelon if there was like a, a, a ROM of the game so he could play it you know, through emulation. He basically got told no. And his only option is to rebuy the game again, like for what he says is going to be 70 Australian dollars. As Yeesh. you can imagine, he doesn't think that's entirely fair. So he asked, do we think that if you buy a game that you should have access to the to the ROM as well? I think there should be a return policy uh, of some sort where you can send them your game and they clearly see that it's you know broken game. They can send you another one. Mm-hmm. But hmm. I, I don't think you should be able to have access to a ROM just because you buy a physical copy of the game. Now, if you want to go through the work yourself to take, if you want to take the, you know, if you want to actually create a ROM from a physical game, I don't think there's anything that should be able to stop you from doing that. Hmm. It's, it's your own property. You can do what you want with it. But there's no, the, the people that actually make the game are under no onus whatsoever to actually provide you with a ROM of the game. Uh, because that's just that's very unfair to them, considering what how much money it costs to produce those carts, and you know how much business they might potentially lose if a ROMs are just available for people to have. Yeah, because I mean, if, in that sense, if if, if a ROM was available, um, then who's to say that the person getting the ROM just couldn't put it online? I'm surprised that like he didn't talk to Watermelon Games and say like, okay, so can I get just get an RMA? Can I yeah. just can I send you with my own cost? 
can I send you the broken cart so you can see hmm. that it's a broken cart? And then you might provide me with uh, if you if if they're if they have it in stock, if they could just provide me with another cart, that'd be. I would see that that would that might the be repair okay. one that he sends. I don't know. If that's yeah, possible. well, it might be that there's no repair to it, but it, it, there's the other case too, where I don't know. Maybe this is one of the first ones, and it's been several several years. In which case, there's always a limit on that. No matter how great the company is. There's always once like a certain number of years have gone by, people just don't provide that, and that's just the way electronics work, unfortunately. Especially when you're an independent company that you know just making them off their own back and that kind of thing. Anyway, you know, watermelon are hardly a big company. I didn't want to dwell too long on this. It was just a quick thing I wanted to input because um, he sent me a message on on Facebook. Um, Joe, he's, uh, he writes for Retro Collect, and he did um, quite an interesting piece about Sega World in Australia. So oh, it's wow. worth checking that out as well on retrocollect.com. So we'll, uh, we'll we'll move on to the next next subject on the uh, on the agenda, and uh, this is something that Rob asked uh, asked me to include, and that is this is a bit of fun because we're getting up to Christmas now. Uh, if there's if there's one Dreamcast item that you could have, money is no object for Christmas. What would it be? I'm going to start with my own choice, and that would be a Divers 2000. I've wanted one for ages. Nice. Snap. The chance of me getting one is probably very very slim. But yeah, that's mine, and obviously yours as well, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Rob, what about you? I, I I don't know. That that's quite grand. I probably should have thought bigger. I, I just wanted Radergy, the uh, the vertical scrolling schmuck. Come on, Rob, money's no object here. <laughs> 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 I, I thought it wanted to be sort of, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I'd, I'd love a copy of that, but uh, 80 to 100 pounds is too much. What about you, Caleb? If you, if you opened a door on your uh, Dreamcast advent calendar and something fell out, what, what would you want it to be? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would probably say the Resident Evil uh, Japanese version Dreamcast. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Blue one or the other? Uh, the one? reddish one. Ah, oh, cool. Yeah. See, there's, there's that many, there's that many de- like desirable unobtainium style items. Like, you know, the, <laughs> oh, like the gun, oh, the gun oh, down. Oh, oh. Hey, Caleb, wait a second. <laughs> I see your Christmas list right here. You don't have the Resident Evil one. You've written down quite clearly that you're asking for the Hello Kitty Dreamcast. <laughs> <laughs> Santa, no! Santa, no! That's that, don't tell them that. They'll make fun of me. <laughs> Go away. You always do I love this. the way that Caleb is constantly plagued by, like, Jesse Ventura or Santa or all these other... <laughs> Run. Nobody else Nobody else ever has to deal with this. It's not fair. <laughs> maybe, maybe Santa's got... Maybe the list is confused because I've said before on this podcast that that Hello Kitty, damn, I'd like that console. Yeah, he probably just made a mistake and it was Rob who wrote that down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, again, moving, moving on slightly... Um, I just wanted to give a quick mention to the fact that we are now uh, ten years old as a as a uh, as a community and a, a, a destination on the internet. I, I always kind of like hesitate to use the word site because it is technically a blog, the Dreamcast Junkyard. But uh, yeah, it's, mm. uh, it's ten years since uh, we started doing this now, and yeah, uh, yeah I mean, Aaron and uh, Caleb. Yeah, you... this, this is this is the year that we uh, that we take uh, we take the Dreamcast Junkyard out into the woods and have them kill their first deer. <laughs> 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 yeah, and but how, how? I mean, I don't, I'm not very up on like Jewish culture, but what age is it that you have a bar mitzvah? Is it 13? It's 13. Yeah, so yeah. We'll, we'll get a bar mitzvah going as well in uh, you know in a couple of years' time. So uh, <laughs> that does that to look forward to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, happy birthday to us, and thanks to everybody who like you know continues to visit the the site, blog, and the uh, Facebook page and group. Because um, without you guys listening to this, um, it wouldn't be a uh, wouldn't be anything really. So uh, yeah, thank you. I don't, I, I, I'd even dare to say that thanks to like face the Facebook page and all that. I actually kind of think Dreamcast Junkie is bigger now than it's ever been, which is really exciting. Yeah, it's, <laughs> considering it's really cool. how old it yeah, is. Yeah, I mean we've we've been there, you know. For the, I mean I've seen a lot of Dreamcast blogs and sites come and go over the years, and we've kind mm. of been there, including mine. Oh yeah, yeah. yes the uh, the Sega CD Junkyard, the uh, boy <laughs> <laughs> that, that that really had some legs until I stopped doing it after the third post. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what a guy, what a rip off that was. Caleb Caleb nine years ago, what were you thinking? <laughs> oh, <school>. Come on. <laughs> no, but seriously, I think Aaron's hit the nail on the head. I think it is 
you, you say if it's a blog or a site, and I think it's definitely in a site. And I and I think what makes it so is that community that is so yeah. so so mm. it's growing now. It's, it's so vibrant, you know. There's so much going on every single day on on the Facebook group and uh, on the site as well. So yeah, absolutely. It never, it never stops. stops. Really. <laughs> it's definitely not a blog. It's the yeah. it, it is come on, come on. It's the world's number one Dreamcast website. Or well, according to Google search, number two, just underneath uh, Dreamcast scene, I believe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cheers, cheers, Aaron. <laughs> Get that one quiet, you know. We're getting there. I'll bleep, I'll bleep that out in the edit. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on again. Something we briefly touched on earlier, probably too much actually, yeah. to actually Sorry. want this to be its own section, is that Res is coming to the PS4 with VR support. You probably already know what, what we think collectively. Um, I think it's going to be pretty uh, pretty good. I, I listened to the, I think it, it was either the Giant Bombcast or the Beastcast, one of the two. I know they're from the same website. Yeah, Giant Bombcast that would be, yeah. They spoke about... Obviously, they are professionals, and they got the chance to use the the VR uh, headset with mm. with resin, and all all signs point to it being pretty uh, phenomenal. There's a couple videos on YouTube of them playing it, yeah. so you can actually see. You know, when they showed it on stage, and they had the crater of res on stage with that big light up fully vibrating yeah. suit that he was wearing yeah. <laughs> they actually got to wear that as well so they were playing the game with this suit that vibrates your entire body can i say something about that suit i watched that exact same video and have you noticed like i could i could totally understand it i mean it looks an amazing addition right but did you notice how hmm. it's like vibrating pads on the arms on the legs like on the chest and then there seemed to be a massive one on the crotch. <laughs> <laughs> they, they know, know what, what they're, they're doing. doing. <laughs> Res has that effect. Yeah. I mean, this is the same. This is the same game that came out on the PS2 with just a straight up vibrator, <laughs> as in like a sex toy vibrator, or no, no, it was just like a little thing that connects into the PS2 that just rumbles. Oh right, because people keep saying it comes with a vibrator, and I'm thinking of like. Like a dildo or something? <laughs> it's not... Well, it's not exactly a dildo, but <laughs> it may as well just be a basic vibrator. Even the way they there was like a Japanese commercial for it, where they just have like these two guys with just their pants on, sweating <laughs> while they're holding a vibrator. It's just weird. I need to Google this. It's, it just doesn't. Yeah, you have to see that commercial. Yeah, I know some people have done tests on that. Um, <laughs> so basically, do you know if this version is going to have the same thing that the 360 version had, where you can get like a bunch of controllers? and they all like kind of vibrate oh yeah that was another thing they did wasn't it because yeah the, yeah they had like you could plug in like five it. controllers and then potentially just strap them on different parts of your body <laughs> i think it was, was i think tape. i think it was in that giant it was on the bomb cast bomb cast i think i think jeff was talking about it because he's the one who got in the suit but one of mm. the P, one of the pr one of the pr chaps was saying so you know like you know this suit. You know, like how much would you pay extra if this could, if the, if this suit could become a reality? And the, uh, you know, he was a bit sort of like, well, maybe a hundred dollars. You know, may, maybe a tad more. And um, no, like, what do you guys think? Would you pay money for that suit? Do you think it's? Do you think the VR is enough, or do you think that suit? And the VR is is really what would take it to the next level. I I felt I felt. Let me just tell you a personal anecdote. There was a time when the huge uh, fake DJ thing for DJ Hero Two came out, and I I took that home and I saw that gigantic box sitting in the corner of my room, and I said, Caleb, this is where you got to draw the line. <laughs> I, and I went and I returned it because like I just can't. And then to like have yeah, that thing is going to be hanging up in your closet. <laughs> You know, it's like this is know, my you could have gone on dates with it. Just, just ignore that. I mean, it's like, uh, yeah. Speaking of, that's a great thing. <laughs> you see this so a girl yeah. comes into my townhouse and she sees this gimp suit thing hanging on the wall. She's like, "You could just, what's that?" You should just say the crotch vibrates. <laughs> Ign- ignore these things on the. Uh, <laughs> hey, you want to you want to you want to come to back back to back to my place? And you can you can try out my vibrating suit. <laughs> I got a vibrating suit you can try. Out. <laughs> <laughs> seriously though from a vr point of view i mean like the closest i suppose like i can say that i've experienced it is when i played txk at, at play expo with, with the with the mm. oculus rift on 
and that that really did take basically that basically you know it's TXK's Tempest and that basically took it that did take it to a new level it was amazing it was very immersive and but what I saw of that from the Res trailer that seemed even more sort of all around you this is a product that's failed in the past I'm not sure if in the UK if this is released but you know I believe it was uh, I believe Mad Cats or some other people. There were several different like vests and stuff yeah, you could buy yeah. that supposedly had force feedback. Yeah, and I can't imagine so the like technology is going to be much. Came out in the UK. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I know, and none of those sold very well at all. Yeah, on the advert, it was it was like oh, feel every punch, like, and it was like, yeah, it's not going to be that. Re- There's no way it's going to be that good. You know, it's <laughs> going to physically injure you. Yeah. To, to answer your uh, question, Rob, I don't think I'd buy a. A vibrating suit for Res, to be honest. Would would this game make you've got a PS4, Tom? I know. Would this game make you buy a you know like a Samsung Gear VR Oculus Rift style add-on? And how much would you pay for it if so? Well, the PlayStation VR itself is coming out. That so, would I be mean, perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 when even when it comes out, depending on the price, I will be interested. But I might just take mm. a like a bit of a step back and have a look at what comes out for it. I I've never actually tried one. Um, I would have to see. You know, I'm a guy. I I don't have a very uh, strong prescription in my glasses. Mm. Mm. Uh, but you know, I would have to see how it worked and see if I could use it without my glasses or because yeah, yeah. everything that I hear is like if you have glasses. Uh, the VR things aren't going to work that great for you. Just on that subject, I've used uh, an Oculus Rift, and they do have uh, interchangeable lenses that you can change. You know, for your kind of—they're not prescription, but they are as near as damn it hmm. to you know to what your glasses strength may be because they ask you when you're trying it. So you can change those. Is there a game where they slide all the different uh, lenses <laughs> yeah. and go one or two, one, two, one or two? I wear glasses all the time, and when I played TXK with the just from, I think it was just a standard Oculus headset. There was no real issue at all. You know, the glasses weren't being pressed into my face or anything, and it didn't seem to affect. There weren't like blind spots in my vision where suddenly it, it all went fuzzy. So no, wait, wait. I remember. I actually did try out the uh, the Virtual Boy. Oh, back God. in the day, <laughs> and uh, it was actually family picture day, and my family got super pissed at me because I was like, they had it at a display case, so I was like playing it for like <laughs> not even like not like you know, it must have been ninety seconds. And when I <laughs> left that thing, there was that big red mark on my forehead <laughs> where the thing, like, I was looking into it. And they, were, my, my family was super pissed at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good look. <laughs> You've got the uh, the telltale lines of uh, it bro- the broken dreams of the uh, the virtual boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's one thing that really surprised me about Res VR is I just assumed it was just going to be controller based. I didn't realize it was going to be head tracking. Mm. And when I saw that you actually have to physically move your head to like aim, I was like, wow, that makes it. Even better. Yeah. I didn't actually expect that for some reason. I keep forgetting that VR actually has like motion tracking in the actual thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, I think we're all quietly optimistic about how good this might be. Um, I'm really looking forward to VR being a, a you know the next step in gaming. To be honest, I think this is the first like system seller for VR so far because most of the stuff they've showed for VR has just been yeah, like yeah. weird tech demos. I mean, even at that thing, they introduced the PlayStation VR and they had these two guys come on stage with this weird game where you like throw discs around and it just looked kind of broken and rubbish. <laughs> they should have just gone to Res straight away and gone, well, this is the VR thing. In fact, I really hope they do a physical copy, like a retail copy of Res and bump cool. it with the VR. Yeah. I think that would make it, that would be a bit of a system seller myself or, you know, VR seller. <laughs> let's, um, let's not forget that the Atari Jack you have a, uh, a, 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 pro- a promised VR headset. Oh, jeepers! You're really reaching any opportunity to bring up that Jaguar. Can you imagine Club Drive in VR? Oh God, I'd rather not. I'm... You two could imagine you are a square car. To, I, I don't want to imagine it. Not VR, let alone VR. Jesus. Um, right, guys. I think we've 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 mumbled on about that enough uh, now. Uh, so I think it's time to move on to our next point of uh, discussion and that is something that's very close to my heart but i'm not sure about you guys but uh, yeah this week i well we were served with a an email from sega europe their legal department asking us to withdraw the collector's guide dreamcast junk guide collector's guide 
from sale. They didn't really give a reason for this. They just asked us to because they said it wasn't an officially endorsed product. Somebody actually posted this on Reddit and the hits to the site went absolutely mental because... Um, really? Yeah, it was. it's probably one uh-huh. of the biggest... Stays. Oh, I did see that someone linked to it on Reddit. That, that, that actually it might have been me who posted it to Reddit. <laughs> no, I don't think it was because I, I know what you post as, and it was somebody mm. else. And it's just got, it was on the the Reddit for video games and the Reddit for Dreamcast. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. No, I never post on the. I only post on the Reddit for Dreamcast because Reddit's a bunch of jerks who won't let me post anything <laughs> on top of the Reddit. Um, not only that, somebody put it on the uh, the Assembler Games forum, and um, thank, well, thank goodness that one of the privileged few on Reddit that can actually post stuff about video games on anywhere else except for the few places that I post. Thank God one of those high and mighty people managed to post the story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and so it's, it's, it has got quite a lot of um, a lot of attention. And I mean, I have withdrawn the book because I don't want to get sued by Sega because at the end of the day, I'm just me. <laughs> you know, I'm not like some kind of multinational <laughs> corporation. But yeah, it's it's... Slightly disappointing, especially because, you know, I know that Sega Legal is different from Sega PR, but like the week before, Sega PR had yeah, put this all over their Twitter it. and they put it on the YouTube channel and Instagram, and then suddenly it was removed, and then, then we get this letter from to be Legal. Honest, I think, um, I think uh, Sega Europe sharing it like that was probably what made the Legal team notice it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I reckon totally the agree. fact that Sega were sharing it themselves, they went, oh, hang on, what's this? We've never heard of this, and, you know, maybe that's what piques their uh, interest just going back to the book itself uh, we purposely didn't put any sega like logos or branding on it or the dreamcast logo you know swirl because we didn't want to incur the wrath of sega which we have inadvertently um it's amazing how many mm. kind of experts in copyright law uh, and uh, and other <laughs> <laughs> sub subsections of, of, of law and legality kind of pop up when something like this happens but you know, before this letter, sorry, email was actually sent, nobody had any issue with it. I mean, Sega themselves didn't have an issue with it. Peter Moore's got a copy. He tweeted about it. He did, yeah. Peter Moore actually yeah. said he thought it was yeah, really cool. I thought, if anyone knows if, if this is legal or, like, I'm breaking any kind of rules or not, it would be Peter Moore. You know what I mean? And he said, yeah, it's really cool. Mm. Thanks. <laughs> Man, that, that'd be a knife in the back. That'd be a knife in the back after he, uh, if he, you know, sent you that tweet back and then immediately sent a note to the legal department. Take him down, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Release the hounds. <laughs> you take, you get this website and you take them down. I just take them the, down right I now. I just got this picture. Do you know, like Monty Burns <laughs> in The Simpsons has that army of lawyers. <laughs> Peter Moore just turns around and goes, take him down. <laughs> yes, sir. The thing is, he's actually he's actually a scout, and he should be like, take him down, Mike. Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he doesn't actually talk like that, but uh, yeah, that was my scout impression. Sorry if I've offended the entire city of Liverpool, um, but yeah, it's um, it's just a, a strange one. Uh, we I can't really say too much about what's happening with the guide. It's not available anymore for sale, just because I, like I say, I, I've respected mm. the email that Sega have sent. And so we withdrawn yeah. it, uh, but it's not the end of the road for the guide. Yeah, the cool. guide is in, let's say, it's in stasis yeah. at the moment. It's in suspended animation, mm. and uh, yeah, it, well, yeah, I'll leave it. I'll just leave it at that for now. We all heard what Santa said at the beginning of this podcast. Like we're we're old, you know. Like we're all. Oh wait, Santa was here at the beginning too. Sorry, Caleb. We didn't. Say, yeah, Santa arrived before you did. Oh, actually, yeah. No, after I, he left something. Let me see. Oh, no, Cole again. All right. <laughs> you, you and Tom, both Cole. At least you got your Cole early, you know. I suppose you could just go out and buy yourself a massive present. Buy yourself a Divers 2000. Oh, yeah. Or a vibrating or rescue. Vibrate. <laughs> or both. <Yeah. laughs> or I could make my own vibrating <laughs> res suit. <laughs> The point is, look, I'm just trying to say that, like, you know, like, we understand, we're grown-ups, we understand copyright. Well, we don't understand it, you know, like, we're experts, but we understand why copyright exists and why these legal teams exist. And... Yeah. Uh, I th- yeah, I think they have every right to ask us to stop. I, I personally didn't see this coming. I thought that it was clear that this wasn't an official item, hmm. but... I guess, I guess, I guess legally, I it guess there's clear it's enough, not clear enough, I suppose. I suppose yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, well, rest assured, the, the the next version, he says with a question mark at the end, uh, will have uh, mm. 
It will be clearly mm-hmm. marked that it's not produced or licensed <laughs> by Sega Holdings Limited <laughs> or in any way, shape or form official. <laughs> I like the idea of actually using the font from the start of the Dreamcast boot up and then just stick not in the I still text. Want the, I still want there to be a speech bubble from the, the Dreamcast girl just saying that, like, <laughs> this is not an official thing. And the point is, I think, I think Tom, you mentioned it before, that if you were one of those lucky few who bought that first edition, then, the, you know, its desirability has just gone right up. <laughs> when the uh, updated book comes out, you can actually add a little section that has a little text checkbox original version of That's a good idea, actually, yeah, yeah, <laughs> or something. Yeah. It's like and put a big capital R next to it. <laughs> Just... <laughs> yeah, I've had, I've had quite a lot of emails from people asking like how they can get one, but unfortunately, there are no more left. So um, yeah. Just watch this space, really. Oh, okay. Yeah. Funny that you mentioned the uh, Dreamcast girl, because you know I used to quite often draw artwork of that mm. character, and then uh, a while back I sort of did a new design of like a Dreamcast mascot. That was actually kind of the reason I did it, because I'm thinking I might want to put that on T-shirts or something like that, and I thought, obviously, I can't use the one from the manga, so I sort of redesigned... You know, made a new character that's based around the Dreamcast instead. I have my 360 controller that I'm going to be finishing up soon that uh, has the your official artwork on there that you didn't actually give me permission to put on a controller, but I did anyway. Oh, maybe you can ask him now. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> I'd like to see a picture of that. I've never, I, I didn't know you were doing that, to be honest. But... Yeah. I'll... I think you've actually seen it. I, you've seen it before. This is the one that I had, like, years ago, and I just never finished it. I'm going to be doing a bunch of epoxy ah. stuff. To make it looks like it's like bleeding on the uh, sides, and then it's gonna be your like undead uh, version of that character. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. Oh, cool. Yeah. Again, that was before. That was when I was drawing the character from the manga yeah. comic. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, just to reiterate, basically, that's what's happened with the guide. Uh, that's why it's not for sale anymore. And uh, yeah, like I said, just watch this space because you know we may have may have some news in the near future about a uh, another version. Yeah, so I think we'll we'll leave it there. And uh, yeah, if anyone from Sega's li- in the highly unlikely event that someone from Sega Europe is listening to this, I'm sorry. Don't please don't sue us. They're, they're listening just to hear. <laughs> <laughs> anything else? Yeah, um, but yeah, there's no there's no <laughs> hard feelings or anything like that. So yeah, cool. Right, let's uh, let's move on hmm. to the next topic. Yeah. We still love you, Sega. <laughs> The next topic is something that is uh, a bone of, not a bone of contention, but something that I find slightly annoying. And um, that is that Same here. <laughs> online, uh, you know, the, the thing the thing about the internet is that it is kind of like the Wild West. There's no real, like, law or, you know, nobody polices it, really. So people have got freedom of expression, which is great. But, you know, sometimes people come up with things that are a little bit stupid, if that's the right word. Um, basically, entitled. <laughs> Yes, definitely. Um, entitled is definitely the word I was looking for. Um, basically, if you're not familiar mm. with what I'm alluding to, uh, there is a, a petition going around at the moment from Change.org, in which uh, somebody I can't remember the guy's name now um, is is basically demanding that uh, or not demanding, but offering the uh, the suggestion, yeah, that Sega of America creates a uh, hmm. a, a Dreamcast two. <laughs> Sega of, Japan. <laughs> Sega of America creates a uh, a Dreamcast <laughs> two. So let let me just run through the the things that this um, this petition is asking for. You know that division of Sega that's been like cut down to next yeah. to nothing and had the who major are, who are studio. famously Sega. famously yeah. uh, known for their hardware department. Yeah, yeah. Didn't wasn't Sega America responsible for the thirty two X? The last thing they they did partially, I think. Anyway, yeah. So basically, this position is. Uh, is asking for people to sign it because they want to petition Sega of America to create a Dreamcast 2. And these are the uh, these are the, the points that are brought up on the petition. So the new console should have a uh, a new but similar design, Wi-Fi, wireless controllers of 4, uh, 720p or 1080p HD upscaling and HDMI output, an internal 500 gigabyte hard drive and a GD-ROM drive. Uh, the console should be able to play original G- Dreamcast GD-ROMs and also have the ability to connect online to a Dreamcast Classic store to purchase <laughs> and download classic Dreamcast titles in digital form 
where it can be played directly from the hard drive. He needs a whole online infrastructure, basically. Yep. They want them to create their own Steam, basically. <laughs> Wait a minute, there's, oh, there's there, more there is, Or, you know, their own PlayStation there's network. There's more, or... yeah. Um, apparently, by making this console made to order, there's less of a financial risk, apparently. <laughs> and, uh, oh. yeah, the... the yeah, the petition. I mean, just on just on a serious note, there's been so many like hardware like Kickstarters and everything. It, it's like it's just the vast majority of them have been colossal failures. There was that one <laughs> called the Retro VGS or whatever it's called. Did you oh, see yeah. that where yeah. they actually bought the rights to the Jaguar yeah, shell? Yeah, yeah. And we're going to do, like, indie games. And, and they, they were very honest about this is how much it's going to cost to do it. And they, they didn't get anywhere near mm. that much amount of money. No, no. And by the way, the Ouya was a scam. Because that was, like, that was like a product <laughs> they were going to release anyways. And the money they got from the Kickstarter was just extra. So, like, that that was not even them getting the money to make it. They That was a thing, like, if you look at the people involved with that, they were from, like, companies that clearly... They had the money already, and the Ouya Kickstarter was just for extra mm. money. And the product still failed horribly because, yeah. <laughs> I'm still waiting for a Gizmondo 2. Yeah. <laughs> Gizmondo. <laughs> um. <laughs> Oh, I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting for the Engage too. Engage 2016. Don't get me wrong. I more than anyone would love to see Sega re-enter the hardware market as a producer of consoles, but this notion of being able to, you know, you can't just click your fingers and have like an, a full R and D department, you know, an online service created. Um, yeah, and manufacturing yes. GD ROMs again, and like I, I'd imagine they'd probably yeah. burn down the freaking GD burners, you know, like back in two thousand and seven or wherever it was when the last official retail Dreamcast game came out. I think they actually like scrapped everything so they no one can make GD ROMs. These anymore guys, they don't understand the scale of operation that was required to produce all of Sega's consoles, specifically the Dreamcast. And they also don't mm. understand just what... I mean, I don't want yeah. to stick it to Sega, but just what a shadow of their former selves they are right now. They have none of... They have none of the manufacturing hmm. bases. They have none of the instru- infrastructure. They barely have software publishing skills anymore. I mean, like with Yakuza, they had to get people to beg Sony to bring them over because Sega couldn't be bothered and there's just yeah. loads of stuff that they just don't really even bring over. There's so many like Sega games that come out in Japan yeah. that we never get, like Pio Pio and all that kind of stuff. They just don't bother. I think the thing that it, it doesn't, in, I wouldn't say it enrages me, but it annoys me the, the most is like, look, this is not, this is not like, an, I'm not trying to be offensive to anybody who's done this, but people constantly like send me emails saying, have you seen this position? Mm. Or they put it on my Facebook page, or yeah. Facebook wall, or tweet me. Have you seen this? Have you seen this? Have you seen this? This, this petition's been around yeah, for yeah, ages. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This petition's been around for ages, and recently it's popped up on loads of different like news websites, as if it's a thing that's worth paying attention. Yeah, to. I mean, look, look, like, look, these are the facts, right? The thing has got. Uh, I'm pretty sure at the time that we're recording this, it's got about twenty-two thousand signatures on it. Now, if it had twenty-two million signatures on it, yeah, then you know you could you could think right, yeah, okay, mm. yeah. twenty-two thousand is nothing. It's peanuts, nothing. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It really isn't. And it's fine to sign up for it, but it's just you know just. Yeah, keep a little bit of uh, common sense and, you know, live in reality. There's a lot of people that say, oh, well, you know, with uh, emulators and whatnot. And it's like, well, yeah, with emulators and whatnot, we can have the... I don't know if you guys have it in the UK, but we have the new version of the Sega Genesis, hmm. uh, where uh can actually play hmm. the old Sega Genesis games. And it's like, it's, so like, right it's, well, yeah. it's very expensive for a very, very... Uh, cheaply made product, and it's not mm, the sound emulation. Yeah, awful. and it's not it's not that great of a product. But I mean, I think maybe some mm. people see that and they're like, "Well, can't you do that?" And it's like, "Well, yeah," but they're selling those on all these secondary markets and stuff. And this is a third. This is a third party that basically got the license to do this. And the reason those things exist is basically someone designed a Mega Drive yeah. on a chip, so it's really cheap to make this little and, and, emulated and, and, and even Mega Drive there chip. Are Dreamcast emulators to uh, the hardware that needs to run a Dreamcast emulator. It's not like the hardware that you need to run one of those and have it run well. I mean, it's just hardest part is the discs because you yeah. can't run you can't run GD ROMs on anything but development kits or actual Dreamcast. You can't 
just buy a drive yeah. that will work in a P- you can't run GD ROMs on a PC so oh. it's not as simple as just sticking the disc in and it works I mean it's like I say it's a nice idea and don't get me wrong if, if it was even slightly possible I'd back it to the hill obviously of course I would but it's just a dream mm. you know, it's, it's complete yeah. and people who are actually getting confused between reality and you know what is a fact is um, is fantasy that yeah. sort of annoys me people are just going oh Sega make this thing we'll buy it <laughs> but it's like what? How do we? What, what are we talking about? You, you won't lose any money. Think, yeah. think about the years. Well, no, you, you can. You can. You can, in fact, make a thing. It's not. It's not possible at this point to make this That's thing. That's the yeah, point, yeah, okay, right? Exactly. I think it's. It, this makes me feel sad. Actually, I can understand why it makes Tom feel angry, and I, sometimes it makes me feel angry. It makes me feel sad because I think these things, and it's not just this one. It's for for all these sorts of petitions you see. They come. They come from a position of love essentially mm. and the problem is though you can't bring it back it's like when somebody dies you can't bring them back it's like it worked 10 years ago it's what it, it's what you just said it, it's like it won't work now it worked well it didn't work then it barely worked <laughs> in the first place it, and it certainly worked. won't work now <laughs> and uh, it's just really sad i understand i'm with you tom i i i, w- I would buy one of these machines but it's not financially viable yeah. i i per i personally think 10 years down the road when software catches up to everything i think you would easily be able to to buy like an emulated thing that looks a lot like you know but you'd be able to run it on another piece of hardware. I don't think I don't think people are going to invest a lot mm. of money. And again, maybe eventually it'll be the software will be cheap enough where people will be able to buy, you know, like a. Uh, um, but again, it's the GD-ROM reader and stuff. You know, that's the worst part. That's the hardest part. Just one thing. thing I wanted to say as well is that you know there are emulation devices out there. There's things like the JXD, which can run uh, Dreamcast ROMs to mm. a certain degree. They're not great, and they are. No, in no way playable it's in some cases um it's not 100 percent emulation mm. like you know uh, accuracy but yeah as caleb said maybe in in, in maybe yeah maybe in 10 years time when like technology is at a, a stage where it's so much more ahead of what we've got now that you know a, a, a chip a, a one yeah. chip on a, on a, a pcb can emulate a dreamcast and a ps3 and everything else that you throw at it but as it stands now i just think it's um it's a nice it's a nice dream, don't get me wrong, but it is literally just the dream. And, and demanding this and having this kind of, this air of entitlement. It's not if, helpful. You know, a, 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 a petition mm. with, with 20 or 1,000 signatures on, it's going to get it. the closest mm. thing, what they should really be asking for rather than this is for them to just continue porting Dreamcast games to the current yeah. digital services yeah, that I, exist. Yeah. I mean, they started doing it. They started doing stuff like Jet Set Radio, Sonic Conventual, that kind of stuff. I agree. They just need to do more of that, I think. I think that's the the closest you're going to get, you know, to that whole idea of having a Dreamcast classic store. Just put out loads of Dreamcast games that they can, you know. You're right. Obviously, just the first party on ones that they have the rights to. Why on to, earth but... would you build an entire new, another hardware platform when your core remaining strength is the software mm. and there already exists bountiful hardware platforms mm. That can play that software. You'd be mental to create another piece of hardware. Just but Rob, it's um, they're making them to order, so there's no financial risk. <laughs> people don't understand <laughs> how. <laughs> yeah, a digital download store for people that need all my order this. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I personally didn't see Grandia, Grandia two coming to Steam. That's something I thought was never going to happen. Yeah. That's but what I mean. It, it, Stuff like that's going to eventually come back. You know, the companies are going to go, oh, look, these games, we've got the code for it. We might as well put them out so people can play them again. Yeah. SNK, they've done, it's a 25 years anniversary, I think, and they've just done some some humble humble bundle. Mm. Oh, yeah, I got that. I got exactly. that. Exactly, a lot of, good of people have got them. Mm. Including some that are classics on Dreamcast, exactly. like uh, Market of Wolves. That's and, how you yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean, ultimately, I just want to say, I can see the comments and everything now. I just want to reiterate once again, I'm not, like, slagging anybody off personally. I, I just think it's a pipe dream. Do you know what I mean? I, I'd love it to be actually feasible, but it's not. It's like, I, again, I, I, I think it's, it's cool if you want to sign up for it. We're not saying anybody shouldn't sign up for it. It's just it would be nice if it was, like... If it was worded, if it was worded in any sort of way that made it seem like it's possible that this could happen, rather this than this like this 
it's really like pie in the sky type stuff that's just it just it's to the point of ridiculousness. Everyone thought Shenmue Free was a Shenmue Free was a pie in the sky thing and that worked. You know, people petitioned that for years and Yu Suzuki backstage was going, Well, loads of people were asking for it, we will find a way to do it and sure enough, all that give you the you Yu Suzuki the uh, license Sega stuff actually worked out because Sega did exactly that. They gave Yu Suzuki the license to make the game. That's obviously a lot more. Yeah, I mean the sense of scale yeah. we're talking but about here at is, the time that looks it's, it's, it's night and day. You know, Shenmue Three is a game. This is a whole new hardware platform. Yeah, exactly. That's it's what I was just saying. It's a piece yeah. of software, and let's not forget that everything lined up perfectly for Shenmue Three. Sega just went, "Here you are." Suzuki, take, take, do what you like, take the rights. Sony then went, yeah, we'll back you. Here, have this dump truck load of money. Then, Kickstarter. They, ha- <laughs> they had a successful Kickstarter campaign. Loads of people gave him loads of money. You know what I mean? And it's just one piece of software that's, ki- that's running on a modern piece of hardware. It is... Hmm. Night and day different to what yeah. this petition is asking for. Sony's like, Sony's like, hey, we only have like three games <laughs> that are good for our systems. Like, we need to like, before anybody finally catches on, we need to like <laughs> let people know that there's something unique coming. Anyway, guys, I think we've uh, we've chatted enough about that. I, again, once I just want to reiterate, please don't take it to heart if you are a particularly um, passionate yeah. supporter of this petition. It's not intended. We'd love it more than anyone for that totally. to be true, but it's just it's just not capable. Yeah. Anyway, that will draw a line with that one now. Um, guys, I think um, we've we've actually been chatting for quite a while now, so I think it's about time we uh, we drew this slightly festive ever so slightly festive episode to a close. Yeah, unless there's uh, there's anything else that anybody else... I mean, if Santa's there, if he wants to uh, add anything else? No, I think he's gone. I, ch- I chased him away. Oh, 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 my God! There is reindeer poop oh, all no. over my lawn. <laughs> like, all over. It's everywhere. That's a disgrace. Oh. Have you seen that thing where, like, Norad does that tracking of Santa like, every, yes, every yes, Christmas? Yes, yes, I have. Yes. Yeah, you know, Norad, the... North American really? defense thing, whatever it is. Yeah, they do a thing on, on Google Wave. You can type it in <laughs> and you can, it shows where they're tracking Santa across the sky. <laughs> so if, if it was needed, they could easily send rockets towards him at any point if needed. <laughs> Scrambling jets against Santa. Like. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> anyway, um, right. Well, that's uh, that'll probably do it for episode 21 of the uh, the Dreamcast Junkie I Dream Pod. You can uh, you can find us on Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash the Dreamcast Junkyard. You we also have a, a group which is groups the Dreamcast Junkyard, and we have our uh, main site which is www.thedreamcastjunkyard.co.uk. Ten years old this month in December 2015. We are also all on Twitter. Well, we're, the Dreamcast Junkyard is on Twitter at Sega Junkyard. And uh, we're on Twitter individually. Uh, Rob, you're on Twitter at R uh, Nicholas J. Aaron, you are on Twitter at the Gaga Man and uh, Lucky Hit Series. Caleb, you're on fi- uh, sorry, you're on YouTube at uh, I'm on YouTube at Blandco, Bland C O, Blandco. And I'm on Twitter at Tom Lee C. And uh, yeah, it, all it remains for us to say is uh, we hope you have a, a fantastic Christmas and uh, a great New Year, and we'll be back soon. Uh, if anyone sends you an email asking you to sign a petition for a Dreamcast 2, uh, probably ignore it. Uh, <laughs> or, or sign it, just for the hell of it. Yeah, thanks very much for listening. And uh, we'd like to uh, say, you know, thanks for supporting us in 2015. Can we say very uh, Dreamcast us? Does that work? <laughs> um, I'm not sure how that works, to be honest. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, thanks very much for listening and supporting us in 2015. We'll be back in 2016 for even more of this kind of crap. So uh, yeah, we hope you have a good Christmas and we'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. See ya. Merry Dreamcast! What, what the fuck was that? Dreamcast Christmas? Please stop this disc now. Now, 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 now.